we have two minutes to go. And they'll go to a box set, try to get Amber Crombie down, and they'll try to get Ryan Miner off the pick again. We're going to talk about Young's defense on Ryan Miner. Boy, good defense by Kansas State. Shot clock is down to 10 now. Miner loses the handle, but he's fouled. Schwarzenberger, that's a two-shot foul. It'll put Miner at the line. Boy, they had a chance. They had a shot clock down. Ryan Miner was coming off a pick. Again, not a very good pick by Bob Joe Evans. They're not freeing him up enough. Got bailed out by the call, but a good call by the officials. Well, now Miner, who hit both free throws in the first half, you mentioned not many free throws in this game for Ryan Miner. Well, and you can tell when a shooter struggling, shooting only 74% from the free throw line for the year. And that's unusual because when you watch his stroke, folks, it is as good as any in the country. Watch it. This is picture perfect for him. And both free throws go down for Miner to give the Sooners a three point lead. Oklahoma a little more aggressive on his own defense. Hatcher for the tie. Abercrombie comes up with a huge rebound and almost throws it away. They got a two on one. Good decision. Erdman pulls it back to use the clock. Good decision. You have to foul? No, nah, not right now. You really don't. You have 20 seconds on the shot clock. You have plenty of time. Just play solid defense. Oklahoma needs to get into an offensive set to get a shot up. I read Asbury's lips is watching this action, so don't foul now. Off Abercrombie, it'll go to the Wildcats, so they force the turnover. And sometimes what happens when you're playing the clock down, you don't get into an offensive set. And what happens, you rush yourself. That time they rush. Foster made too hard a pass. Abercrombie couldn't handle it. It's a turnover. All right, 51 seconds to go, John. A three-point ball game. The lead for the Sooners. Do the Wildcats need to look for a three now, or can you still go two points? No, you have plenty of time to do whatever you want to do. Be patient. Get the shot you want. Get the ball to Tyrone Davis. And one of the reasons is when he gets it inside, he can either score A or they collapse on him. He can pitch it out. But I would think if Davis gets it, he'll attack because he can get to the free throw line. Just one timeout remaining for the Wildcats. But the key is if there is a tie-up, the arrow would give the ball back to Kansas State. The Sooners with their full complement of timeouts. But the next foul by Oklahoma will give Kansas State two free throws. They have nine team fouls right now. trying to go to 2 and 0 in the conference and trying to keep their seven game winning streak alive. Who do you look for here from the Wildcats? Mark uh, Young? I, I still think Ty Davis. Just make sure he catches the basketball. He just draws so much attention. Now, if Young can catch it on the wing and penetrate, again, he shoots kind of a set shot type of shot, so you have to wait, make sure you watch it. But that's the guy I'd look for, Tyrone Davis, because Amber Crabby matches up, gives it away five inches. All right. And just stay with the ball. Oklahoma set back in their zone defense that's worked pretty effectively tonight for the Sooners. And we'll see how aggressive they are on the outside. They're, a little, they're sitting back a little bit now. You see the time remaining. That's in regulation. The tough part is the crowd gets antsy, which makes the players antsy. Hatcher. That pulls them to within one. Now the Wildcats are really forced to foul, and they do. Schwarzenberger will put Ryan Miner at the line. He'll be shooting one and one. Man, it would have been nice if Schwarzenberger, you allow Miner to catch it and then single or double team him so he gets rid of the basketball and then foul somebody else. Miner is a 74% free throw shooter, but we know how good he is. He's an All-American. Foster shoots 84%, but everybody else is not a very good shooter, under 70. So really, you try to get it out of Miner's hand. That was pure. Uh, it's just, it is just a fun stroke to watch. And it's surprising when he gets in a, in a slump as a shooter because he, he shoots the ball so well. Now do you need a three if he hits this one? I still think you can attack the basket. Attack the basket. See if you can score. If the three is open, that's fine. 
Well, Tom Asbury wants to talk it over and go through the strategy for the Wildcats, trailing by three, 27.2 seconds remaining. And you can play this game for a long time. You can try to score two and foul again. You can do that because the, the most you can get behind, if you score, whether it's two points or three points, if you score two and you foul, you'll only be down three all the way to the end. And if you're Oklahoma, you want to keep the ball in the hands of Foster and Miner, your two best free throws. Exactly right. When they take the ball out of bounds, those two should have it. But as your K-State, double them, make them throw over top, and then foul one of the bigger guys down the court. All right. Let's give you an update on the programming notes. For ESPN, Wake Forest and Duke coming up tomorrow night starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time, followed by North Carolina and Georgia Tech. A doubleheader from the ACC tomorrow night. Right here on, actually over on ESPN 1. Kansas State in the huddle. Tom Asbury saying we're still a developing team, but boy, we are getting a lot better. He said we're better in all areas, better than we were last year. He said that's good because we were terrible last year. And you could see him right there. It looked like he was talking about, hey, if you catch inside, you can pass it out for the shot. When the ball goes in against the zone, they're going to collapse a little bit. Elliot Hatcher just hit the last jump shot. A shooter, when you make one, you feel like you make another one. Look for Hatcher, too. He's the guy who can, can really stroke it. Hatcher has a three in this game and hitting 40% of his threes on the year. And they brought in Sean Rhodes at 6'10", a little bit bigger body they can throw into, and maybe he can pitch out, especially cross court on some. Ooh, almost stolen away by Abercrombie. Schwartz and Gruber for the tie. No. Not Foster's the got the rebound, and he's fouled. And an 85% free throw shooter, Tyrone Foster, will go to the line. Not that it was a bad shot, but he wasn't ready to shoot it. He had the ball, and he kind of hesitated. You don't see many kids make a shot. Once you've hesitated, you might as well back it out. You had 18 seconds. Especially from three-point range. Yeah, and it was pretty deep. That's probably not the shot they wanted as they came out of the timeout. Now Foster a chance to give the Sooners some breathing room with 18.2 seconds to go. These are his first free throw attempts here tonight. Now you can see why he hits 85%. Well, and what's important, too, about that, your point guard. When your point guard makes high percentage of free throw, he's going to have the ball most of the time. Mm -hmm. And that's a good feeling for Kelvin Sampson's ball club. That was a big one there, too, because now it makes it a two-possession situation for the Wildcats. Still a two-possession situation. Hatcher pulls up from three. Boy, banked it high off the glass. And now the foul on Bobby Joe Evans. Mark Young forced to foul. That's his fourth. You know, it's interesting, because the shot by Hatcher, what's funny about this game, that's, there's still a lot of time. You know, there's 18 seconds to come down. That's still not the shot you want. He's a senior. You got to say, hey, take it to the hole. Take it right to the glass. They're either going to let you lay it in or they're going to foul you. I mean, they're going to get away from you, so it usually becomes an easier basket. Evans has hit 86% of his free throws this year. And that makes it five for Kelvin Sampson Sooners. Boy, Sampson's got to be pleased with this win. His team shoots just 37% from the field, and yet will go 1-0 and in the Big 8 and 9-4 and overall. Well, any win on the road in the Big 8 is a big win, and, and it just kind of lets their club gel a little bit more as they pick their way up in this Big 8 conference. Miner will just run it out, and the Sooners with an impressive win over a tough Wildcat team. It snaps the Wildcats seven-game winning streak, and now Kelvin Sampson can rest the back. I'm sure it'll feel a lot better with a win here tonight. Well, terrific win. They did a nice job defensively. They mixed up the defenses. They stayed in the zone most of the time. And you know what? Ryan Miner didn't play well. His teammates picked him up, especially Tyrone Foster. Abercrombie had a big second half. But you know what? I love the kid Bobby Joe Evans. He's big. He's agile. He wasn't afraid to play. So the Sooners now go to 1-0 in this conference, and they're going to start to make some noise. Everybody was wondering what, 